What is up everybody? I am Kevin Ioli. Welcome. I appreciate you joining me. And my guest right now, one of the great wrestlers of uh, recent vintage. I gotta tell you, Bo, I grew up, I was born and raised in Pittsburgh. Nice. A ton of Penn State fans. Yeah, 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 of course. My favorite shirt in the 70s when I was graduating high school said, I root for two teams, Pitt and whoever plays Penn State. <laughs> so, oh, <man>. so <laughs> Sorry, I, I hope you forgive me for that. No problem. I hope you forgive me too. So, yeah, no, no forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. So you are fighting Cody Brundage on right. the uh, main card of uh, UFC 300, a, a prime slot. Of course, a lot of uh, controversy surrounding right. you being on the main card. Yeah. But, uh, how, how, is that just like you know water off your back? Does it bother you at all? Uh, you know, to me, um, it doesn't bother me a lot. I think that um, the fans obviously are going to have opinions um, regardless, and you know. The more I think about it, the more I think it'll it'll make sense. You know, a couple years down the line, yes. when I'm fighting uh, in main events, fighting for the belt, things like that, and uh, people will have kind of maybe look back and think like it was an obvious choice. Yeah. But now it maybe doesn't make as much sense. It reminds me, and I don't think they did this, but John Jones at UFC 87, right? He got on the card, and Brock Lesnar was on the card, GSP is yeah. on the card. Nobody knows who the hell John Jones is, <laughs> and now all of a sudden, you know, he's the greatest fighter of all time. Right. It's an investment in you, though. You look at it that way, like, hey, they see a potential superstar, not just a, a potential champion, but a, a pay-per-view seller, that they're, they're trying to do this with you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that I'm on the, I'm on the pay-per-view for a reason, and the UFC um, is a business. At the end of the day, they're uh, you know, looking to make money and they're looking to sell pay-per-views. And so, you know, if I didn't sell pay-per-views, I wouldn't be where I'm at. And I think that at the same time, um, it's a partnership. You know, I want to do my job, go out there, perform uh, the way I expect to and uh, just give them a reason to continue to back them. I think there's another reason. There's three five-round fights on this uh, <laughs> card, right? right? So it's going to be a long main card, so maybe if you get a, uh, a short fight in there. That, I, I didn't think about that until you just brought it up, but yeah, it makes sense now. now I'm about it it might have been uh, a little strategic. Yeah, no, we don't want to, I don't want to have Cody watching this, and then all no. of a sudden I got, I got some issues. Yeah, just with uh, history and stuff, I think that's probably what people expect. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Michael Bisping gave you a great comment, uh, compliment. I don't know if you saw that, but he said, you know, you could be the American Habib, and he brought up Islam Mahachev, and then of course I'm sure you're not crazy about the third one he used, but with Hamza Shimaev, right? But uh, what was your reaction? Because, I mean, to be compared to Habib in this sport, I think is probably the ultimate compliment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, he's, you know, without, uh, goes without saying um, his career and his accomplishments, and I think that more than that, he's just a guy that was very classy, um, you know, good role model, good example. And so, to be compared to him is, is um, something I'm super grateful for. And uh, you know, he's he's one of the greats in, in my mind, a guy that I study a ton. And uh, I, I appreciate that that comparison. You know, I'm going to continue to work to improve and get better and um, on my skills. And uh, hopefully, you know, I can have a similar career. I want to you know ask you this question because. Habib was a guy that obviously known as a great wrestler, and he, his striking look. Look at his striking as Conor McGregor, right? right? Like people, it was amazingly good. Conor was a striker. Do you feel like you know you see that in yourself, where like your striking is now starting to come around? Yeah, you know, I think that um, I'm gaining confidence every day in my, in my with training and my amazing coaches at American Top Team, and so I'm really fortunate that these guys are, are teaching me and pouring into me and. Uh, yeah, I think that the, the threat of my wrestling is obviously always going to be there, which which aids in uh, my striking. And uh, you know, everybody saw my last fight, what I was able to do. So, you know, for me, I've continued to build my reputation. And you know, I think people obviously got to know me as a wrestler, but they're going to just continue to get to know me as a main fighter. Do you? And that was going to be my question. Do you feel comfortable enough to just feel like? Right now, people view you as a wrestler who has to strike, right? Do you feel comfortable as yourself as an MMA fighter right now, or is it still, as your instinct, still wrestling first? I feel comfortable. Um, you know, my, my instinct is to go out there and win the fight. So, you know, for me, I didn't take a lot of uh, time or effort to, like, transition that, right? Like, as soon as I started training, I could kind of adjust my mind and, I guess, forget those rules and sure. tactics in wrestling because I'm just trying to accomplish, you know, whatever it is that I'm, that I'm doing in that moment. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I, uh, I feel like I'm continuing to develop as an MMA fighter and get better and improve. I'm always gonna have that strong wrestling base and I'm gonna use that to my advantage. But again, it's just um, more skills I can get and the more diverse, the more dangerous I am. 
where do you think you are in your development in terms of you know being ready to fight the elite guys, right? I mean, obviously you're fighting a guy that ten and five, and he's been in the UFC for a while, so you know he is no joke. And coming off what was it, a ninety second win in El Paso, that right. was uh, very impressive. But like. Obviously, you're you know right now they don't have you going up against the top ten guys. I've right. seen you kind of making comments about that you feel you're ready for that. But where do you think you are on the way to where you're going to be? Well, I think that as far as where I'm at now to um, you know where I can get for me personally, um, very early, very early stages, and there's a lot of improvement and development to be had. And I I know when I look back at my wrestling career and the way that I developed and improved. You know, I can kind of hopefully shorten that and, and maybe uh, expedite it a little bit and, and but, but translate that into all these other skills. And so you know, overall for, for me as a fighter, I have a long way to go. As far as competing against the best guys in the world, I think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm quite a bit closer. Um, you know, I, again, I mentioned training at American Top Team, but I get to train with a lot of the best guys in the world and test myself against them. And I'm seeing you know, a lot of improvements. And so you know, for me with, uh, the development, uh, you know, this opponent's a step up. I think he's the best guy that I've fought. Right. But I'm looking uh, forward to using the opportunity to just continue to get better and improve. And at the end of the day, how long do you want to do this, right? Because I'm sure you have a lot of options in your life. You're a smart guy. You've done a lot of things, right? Like, how, are you going to be a lifer until you can't do it anymore? Or like, what, what's the, uh, yeah. the plan in MMA? For me, the plan is to go until I achieve my goals. So I'm going to uh, do everything in the sport that I want to do, that I want to accomplish, and then from there, um, you know, we'll pivot. Um, depends when that is and what it looks like, what the pivot will look like, um, but I know that I'm going to be involved with MMA forever. I just, I love it too much, and it's too much fun for me, Sure, whether that's at a, a competing a capacity of competition or coaching in some way, but I, I really love the sport, and I, I love seeing the trajectory of the sport and the way that it's evolved. It's, it's really cool, and so I, I want to be part of that for a, a while. You know, you talk about goals, and so you win three NTA Division One championships, which not many people do, but you didn't win four, yeah, right? Yeah. And I know that has to be, the yeah. Olympics had to be a thing. So is MMA like your one, ch I don't want to say your one chance to make up, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like now you can ace all the goals uh, before you give me one last, like kind of like Cormier did. Right. Yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, to me, I look at my NCAA career, I look at my um, post-college career in wrestling, and... There were things I wanted to accomplish that, that I wasn't able to, and so it, it hurts and stings, but I think it gives me that extra motivation to continue to, you know, want to improve and get better and, um, you know, now achieve my goals in fighting. That, that being said, I look back at my experiences and there were a lot of value and a lot of lessons learned outside of just winning and losing. Sure. And so those are things that I appreciate and I can look back at my losses and um, take a lot from them. And, you know, they still hurt, they still sting, but, there was a part of my life that's helping refine me and, and sharpen me into the person that I'm supposed to be. And I think it's the same with fighting. So you know, I'm determined to um, get where I want to go and achieve my goals. And uh, you know, there might be a few bumps in the road on the way, but fortunately, you know, there's not uh, eligibility. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'll have uh, you know plenty of time. So been nine months since we last saw you. Uh, I know you had things going on in your personal life, but is. Do you want to fight more often than that? I mean, it, can we expect to see you back sooner than another nine months? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm definitely trying to fight um, multiple times this year. I would love to get three fights this year if I can. Um, it, it's it's so hard to predict. You know, every other sport has a schedule, has a season, a postseason, and so you know. In the NFL, they're going to get 17 games. They're going to get X amount of postseason games. And uh, with fighting, there's just so much that can happen and so much volatility that it's hard to predict. But I definitely want to fight uh, more and get and get more fights under my belt this year. Um, the layoff was good for my development, and now I feel like in a place where you know, I can start to rattle off a few wins in a row. I want to wrap with this. You know, you obviously, being a prospect, they've got to get you out on the road and move you around. You've been fighting a lot in Las Vegas. Yeah. I was thinking maybe International Fight Week, if you won, would be a good one to come back at. But do you feel like you need to get out and, and be seen by fans in other places? Um, I, I haven't really thought about it a lot. You know, I uh, feel like my fan base and the people that are getting to know me, it's its definitely um, been a quick, you know, quick rise, a quick uptick, and, and so I feel like wherever I fight, people are going to watch. Obviously, I had a strong fan base already in wrestling, and, uh, you know, I'm building my reputation in MMA. I think that uh, just from my own kind of gauges, there's 
a lot of international interest and stuff like that. So I'll be open to fighting somewhere internationally at some point. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I love Vegas too. So really, wherever the timeline works out and wherever we can do it, I'll, I'll make it work. UFC 300, this young man, Bo Nickel, will be fighting Cody Brundage on the opener of the pay-per-view. Don't want to miss that on Saturday, Bo. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks. Yep. Be wrong. Well. Um, since they just went in with Alex for a clinic, we'll go do your last interview. Okay. Post your comeback now.